Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online doubles ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Using the new team that we featured for the last couple of episodes and just trying to climb our way back up. First of all, today's exciting because if you've not seen already, I posted the VGC 2020 team building guide, so I hope that some of you guys find that helpful. I spent a lot of time working on it in the last week and a half or so, so please go watch that. If you've not seen it already, definitely go check it out. And the question of the day is, have you watched the team building guide yet? So by the time you answer that question, the answer better be yes. But in all seriousness, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be making content outside of just battles now. And uh, like I mentioned, I have finals up until next Tuesday. I only have two exams, fortunately, this semester, so it's not like terrible, but still pretty busy. Um, and yeah, I want to make sure that I do well on those exams. So I'm uh, only going to be doing Road to Ranked, I think, in the next couple of days, and then after after next Tuesday, we'll be back with more non-battling content. I want to start making individual Pokemon guides for Pokemon that you might want to use in VGC 2020. So, let's get this episode started. Really interesting team we're going up against today. I feel like that's like a 20... I don't even know. I was going to say like 2013-2015 hybrid kind of deal with uh, Gyarados, Hydreigon, Gengar, Conkelder, Togekiss, and Togedemaru. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I love Duraludon here. Uh, Hydreigon's kind of scary though. Uh, Mimikyu's really good here, too. There's a fair amount of special type attackers here, which is kind of scary, I think. Um, Rotom's not that great with the Togedemaru. Like, Weasley actually could be okay. Like, uh, Fairy-type coverage is pretty good, as well as Poison-type coverage. Uh, maybe I like Mimikyu to elude on here. Mimikyu has solid options against pretty much everything, I would say. Um... Certainly an interesting team for my opponent. I like really honestly kind of want to bring Weezing. Uh, Togekiss is not a great matchup for this team in general though, so I think I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and fix it a bit so that I have a better matchup against it. I guess Gastrodon's not great here. You know what? I'll bring Weezing. Let's give it a try. And Rotom. Questionable decisions. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, I really like my opponent's team though. That's super cool. So, let's see what he's uh, got back in. As always, if you guys enjoy Road to Rank, please show support by leaving a like in the video. I'd appreciate it. And thanks again to everyone that's been tuning into the videos recently. We're almost at 90k subs, which is really hype. And after finals next week, I'm going to try to make a really active push to hopefully get to 100k. Like, that would be super exciting. Uh, it's Hydreigon and Togekiss against Duraludon and Mimikyu. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Um... Because Duraludon can just obviously target Hydreigon, but I'm worried that a Draco Meteor from Hydreigon will just destroy me. So perhaps I need a Dynamax here just to avoid getting knocked out. But does a Dynamax attack from Hydreigon knock us out? That is the other question. Yeah, Draco will chaos. Definitely KO us. Um, not if we Dynamax, but if he Dynamaxes and goes for a max Stormwind. Let's see, base 130, special. That will not KO us. I think we actually need a Dynamax Duralude on here. And Max Worm and the Hydreigon, yeah. Um, let's say it's... It could switch out, but there aren't any great Dragon switch-ins on my opponent's side. Other than, I guess, Togedemaru. Uh, I'll play Rough Togekiss. Yeah, Shadow Claw is probably better there, because it's 100% accurate. Togekiss switches out. Interesting. Okay. I'm okay with that. There's the Dynamax from Hydreigon, yeah, okay. Well, this should not KO us. Because we're Dynamaxed. And how much do we do in return? Max. Or win. From us, does... It's also not KO. Yeah, maybe I should have doubled up onto that slot then, actually. Yeah, our max worm, worm wind does 80 to 95%. Yeah, a double up there would, would have been better. Mm. I guess the reason I didn't want to double up was in case I drag on protected. So in case gets like a free air slash or thunder wave off. Yeah, I did actually end up max guarding. Huh. Okay, well. I guess that kind of justifies the play that I made. <laughs> Interesting. So what does he go for here? Uh, does Togemaru have Helping Hand? He didn't before, right? I actually don't remember off the top of my head, so I want to double check that. I think it might. 
Um, yeah, it does. I could definitely see it going for helping hand here. How do we knock out with life or play rough? That's the question. Uh, Mimikyu, play rough, life or we do. So I think that means we double up with Max Warm Wind and play rough. Yeah. Interesting Dynamax. They're just a max card, and it's slower than uh, or the Hydreigon's faster than Togemaru. Okay, I did not expect that, but I think this should work out for us unless we miss. Really hope we don't miss. Could see a nuzzle come out from, and it's life orb too. Okay, huh? And there's the nuzzle. Ugh. Come on, come on! I believe in you, Mimikyu. You can do it. Please. Come on. Oh, we actually based on how speed works now. Yeah, we'll actually max one win first. Oh, please, Mimikyu. This is so- I, I, I'm, I'm so nervous right now. Okay, nice. Nice. Okay, well that's good. We've got to not rid of our opponent's Dynamax. Togedemaru is not that big of, of an offensive threat. And we still have one turn of Dynamax left. And like, it's not like Togekiss or Togedemaru are posing major threats offensively. Um, uh, Actually, maybe I should not underestimate them as much as I am. There's Togekiss over there. I could totally see him just like air slashing here and iron heading. Uh, now I really wish I had Arcanine, don't I? But let's go for Max Steel Spike here into Togekiss. And I think I'll probably just withdraw out into Proton here. Yeah. So one cool kind of play that I can make is I can actually Hydro Pump the Togekiss, or even Thunderbolt, but probably Hydro Pump. Or actually, what am I saying? <laughs> No, never mind. I, I was gonna say how I can like re or ignore uh, Togedemaru's shenanigans, but yeah, okay. He's just following me, which is fine. Uh, is it nuzzling me? Nope, just Iron Head. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to see. Okay, nice. The max skill spike comes out. I don't think this KOs, but we'll see. It KOs! Nice! Oh, that's sick. Very good. Yeah, this Duraludon was a beast. Yeah, that's why we needed a Dynamax turn one, though, because Life Orb Draco was just going to obliterate us if we didn't Dynamax. Okay, not bad. So that was really good. We're up now, 4-2. Gyarados is the last one. Oh, this is sick. This is going to be sick. Because here's what I can do now. I can just withdraw out the Duraludon out into Weezing and just Thunderbolt the Gyarados. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to go for. My opponent cannot Dynamax. So Weezing will ignore the Lightning Rod. Yeah. Maybe it would have been better to... Like, I, I just... It's because like, Thunderbolt can't miss, so unless it's Wackenberry Gyarados, which I guess it could be. Um, I just really wanted to make this play. It's not Wackenberry, it looks like. Let's go! <laughs> that's why I got Weezing on the team, guys. <laughs> oh, that was sick. Nice. That was beautiful. Yeah, I didn't want to risk missing Will-O-Wisp into a banded Power Whip, or even just a normal Power Whip knocking out Rotom, because Will-O-Wisp and Hydro Pump can both both miss, obviously. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's just go back out into Duraludon. Actually, yeah, I mean, regardless of what we do, it'll take two turns to win here. So we'll just double switch. Woo! That feels good, though, yeah. You get to see how you can make some cool plays with Weezing around Lightning Rod. Or just around abilities in general. Yeah, I thought Hydreigon was going to be really scary, but I thought it was interesting that the Nuzzle went into Mimikyu and not Duraludon, because I feel like the Paralysis chance is worth it on Duraludon, just so that you can deny it an attack. We got fortunate that Mimikyu was not fully paralyzed and didn't misplay Rough. Um, that could have been really bad for us, but fortunately, neither of those happened. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I, I'm glad I actually got to bring Weezing the last two episodes because I, I do think it's a really cool Pokemon. I, I feel like this team probably doesn't optimize uh, using it, but I still have really enjoyed playing with it, and I think you get to make some cool plays like we just did. Oh no, that's a Corsola, isn't it? Oh, Charizard also really destroys me, so I'm kind of scared about, about that. Uh, I think, yeah, one thing I would probably do if I were to edit this team is have better matchups against, like, the base 97 to 100 speed Pokemon, like Charizard and Hydreigon. Um... So this is gonna be Eevee like Corsola. Okay. Um. 
What do I do? Mimikyu, I think. Mimikyu Rotom still seems okay. I don't feel great about this matchup though, I will be honest. Let's see, Mimikyu, Rotom. Uh, I guess Gastro is still alright, and maybe Duraludon. Let's see, Weezing is not the good pick here, given its matchup against Duraludon and Charizard. Arcanine can match up against the Charizard and maybe take a Fire-type attack, but it doesn't do anything in return. My opponent's team is pretty much all special, so yeah, I guess we go with these four. It doesn't feel great, though. I don't think the matchup is amazing. Um, and yeah, you know, people were asking when I built this team, like, oh, what are your answers against special-type Pokemon? And normally Duraludon's a pretty good answer, but Charizard kind of puts a stop to that. So I think having something like an outspeed it, I mean, that's what Rotom is here for, which is why we're leading with it, because it, like, it could just Thunderbolt one-shot Charizard if it doesn't Dynamax. But it's still not great. But it's going to be Gastrodon and Winsicott. Okay, don't think I mind that as much. I might actually commit to Dynamaxing Mimikyu. Um, because the defense drops... We're actually really good against Gastrodon, especially if it chooses to Dynamax. What's my other play? Maybe I don't Dynamax turn one? Um, I'm just worried about Tailwinding, my, or my whims opponent's whims got Tailwinding, and then getting a free switch into something, which can just Dynamax and then knock out Mimikyu. So maybe we don't Dynamax Mimikyu turn one. Yeah, maybe we Volt Switch and play rough. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, Gastro Dynamaxes. That's not shocking. I might have been better to Dynamax. The problem of is that like I just don't have great answers against Gastrodon in general. Um, which is why I want to Dynamax and start going for defense drops. I don't know. Let's see, what do you guys for first? Okay, well it's not going to be a Tailwind, which is good news for us, I would say. It's probably, I think, an Energy Ball? Maybe a Moonblast into Mimikyu. Like, could be a double up into Mimikyu, but... Uh, ooh, this is scary. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're not going to go for uh, Max Quake into the Rotom slot. And if you do, that's a godlike prediction. Dazzling Gleam. Oh, wow. Interesting. I haven't seen that on Mimikyu in a long... Or, uh... Whimsicott in a while. Uh, yeah. Maybe Dynamaxing would have been better. I don't know. Okay, play Rough Connects at least. So that's out the way. I just worry about a Gastro versus Gastro endgame. That should be in our favor because we have Recover. But if he has Recover too, then obviously it's basically... Ooh, Max Ooze! Okay, that's not what I was expecting. Interesting. So that gives you a special attack increase. Oh, that's not terrible then, I guess. Because my opponent doesn't have Tailwind and I got rid of... Especially because now if you have a Gastro versus Gastro endgame, if I Dynamax and get three special defense increases while he has only two, then that's in our favor. There's Charizard. Yeah, I am just worried about getting obliterated by a Heat Wave right now, though. See, we have knock out Duraludon, which Specs it probably does. Even without Specs, it might. Charizard. Duraludon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. It should be Timid. Heat Wave. Am I reading this correctly? Why does it do so little? Item. Choice Specs. Huh. 138 to 163. Um. Oh, that's because it's Dynamax Duraludon. That would make more sense. Uh, that's not good at all. But I think I gotta switch out Duraludon here into Rotom. Oh, I hope that went in on time. Oh, it didn't go in on time. <laughs> you know, that actually might be for the better. Because Gastro doesn't get effects from its Dynamax attack here, so then I get in Rotom and Gastrodon. It's Life Orb too? Okay, yeah, that's not shocking. 
And it went for Max Quick. Yeah, okay. That actually might have worked out better for us, hilariously enough. Um. Yeah. Uh, actually, I mean, it wouldn't have made a difference. Max Quick wouldn't have gone on anyway, so no, it wouldn't have worked out better for us, but yeah. That's my bad. Uh, yeah, you can't lock in with like one second left. You basically have to do it beforehand because the input won't read. Unfortunately, I, yeah, I think I just Thunderbolt here, Dynamax, and go for a max quick of my own onto Gastrodon. Charizard doesn't protect here for some reason. Well, that'd be good. It's just that we might end up in the Gastro versus Gastro endgame, which is not fun for anyone. Um, yeah, I guess he also has plus one special attack. But I can get to plus three special defense, while or even if it max quicks this turn, it will be at plus one special attack, plus one special defense. So then the question is, does it recover? Because if it does, then it literally will come down to a PP war. Although I think we should win that. Oh, actually, if it has a poison type attack, then I don't think it has recovered, because I'm pretty sure you should still run Scald and Earth Power. So I think in the Gastrodon versus Gastrodon endgame, we actually should win that. So our goal is basically to knock out what is around the Gastrodon, but if Charizard's smart here, it should protect. That being said, we can still just launch a Thunderbolt into that slot next turn, but he's actually going to switch out, okay. I, I'd rather take that, I guess, because it's still a free Thunderbolt into that slot. And it's still a Ludon coming out. Ooh, this just got interesting. Uh, maybe I should, yeah, and if I called that and doubled up into the Dura Ludon slot... I think the problem is now that Dura Ludon probably can just knock out Rotom next turn. If it can't, though... Oh, this is going to be close. Hmm. Yeah, I guess Charizard can't Solar Beam me, can it? Because there's no Sun. How much does Thunderbolt do? Can we get a Para? Actually, good damage. No Para. He's going for another Max Ooze. Okay, into Rotom. Oh, that does a ton. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting endgame with the Gastrodons. I think it's going to come down to that. Okay, so we'll max Quake here. Man, if I doubled up on a Dura Loot on there, that would have been nice. Oh no, I'll just lose actually. What am I saying? Yeah, I've lost this. Because, um, I can't hit Charizard. Although I guess I can just heal with Recover every turn. Hmm. Yeah. Um, just double up on a Dura Loot on here. Unless my opponent throws and switches out Duraloot onto the Charizard for some reason, but we'll see how much like Heat Wave or Air Slash does onto Gastro. With Life Orb, it should be a fair amount. Plus, you have Gastro on plus two special attack. So that was well played. Um, yeah, what could have been better this game? Maybe Dynamaxing Mimikyu turn one could have been good. Uh, obviously, the timeout was not great for us, but I'm not really sure if that. Like, I feel like the like, like Charizard is not a great matchup for this team, especially Charizard plus Gastrodon. And my opponent played well around the Scarf Tom. Okay, unless we para here, or crit. But, nope. Oh, that was actually a crit. <laughs> but no para. Uh, there's Dark Pulse. Yeah, going into Rotom. Wow, we survived that? Huh. Well, unfortunately it doesn't end up mattering. Um, okay. You know, I can actually see a world where we still win this, because we're going to be at plus two special defense now from Gastrodon. Oh, man. So now, I, now Charizard shouldn't actually do any much damage to us. I think we just stall it out. Yeah, and in this last turn, we're going to definitely max quake the Gastrodon to get the last special defense boost. Can Gastro pull this 2v1 off? If it can, it has... In my eyes, become the clutchest Pokemon of all time. <laughs> the problem is also the amount of PP I have, right? Like, uh, once I run out of Max Quick PPs, I can't touch Charizard. He's actually just gonna commit Solar Beam. Oh, interesting. I mean, I can just keep protecting. Uh, can we avoid a poison? Okay. Hmm. So now the question is if the Gastrodon really doesn't have a way to heal itself, I think we can win. So does it have recover? If you're running Sludge Bomb, I would assume Scald Earth Power Protect. <sighs> the other question is, do I want to... I mean, I should protect here, but... What if... Uh, it's been going first consistently, so I assume it has some speed investment. 
Like, I'm thinking of not protecting here to try to get the Earth Power off, but I think I'll just protect. If it has Recover, we're probably screwed anyway. How much does Solar Beam do? Let me just check. This is plus three to Special Defense. So Charizard. I'm just worried that it doesn't have Protect. Solar Beam. Life Orb. We're at plus three Special Defense. And we have the berry. No. That does nothing. I'm going for the earth power in case we speed high can actually get the KO here. Maybe that isn't worth worth, worth the crit chance here though. Because we get crit, we just lose. Okay, I was honestly low-key expecting to get crit there. It doesn't have recover! Oh, that did so much though. Can we KO with Earth Power here? Okay. Now we just click recover. Maybe protect would have been better there, but why would you launch a solar beam? I'm just worried about air slash flinch now. We lose to that. But he's just solar beaming! I think we've won. Because now we can just heal back. Gashiron, you're so clutch! <laughs> no way. Yeah, now we can just recover and protect. No way. I was so worried about Air Slash. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is why Gashiron's so... Like, that's, this is why I love running Recover, specifically. Uh, instead of a third offensive attack. Nice. Let's just recover one more time. We should be able to win this now. Um, what is its last? I mean, I guess it's double fire type attack. It did have air slash. Why would you go for solar beam? Air slash is just better. <laughs> Unless you expect me not to have protect, I guess. But yeah, that should be game. Wow. Okay. Unless it crits a air slash, but we just protect on the turns that it's solar beams. Oof. Yeah, I think my opponent misplayed by going for the solar beam there in the end uh, rather than going for air slash. Okay. Here it is. No crit. Good. And we'll scald in return. I think two skulls probably gets the KO. No, that one by itself gets the KO. Wow. Oh, that was a crit. Okay. Woof. That was crazy. That was a really fun game. Did not expect that to play out the way it did. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but Gastron getting triple max quick off at plus three special defense, uh, and then being able to knock out the opposing Gastron. Max use is interesting. Like the special attack increases aren't great for Gastron itself, but what it's good for is its partner. But what was good for us in this game was that the partner was never really that useful. I wonder if Charizard had Protect, because if it did, I feel like it would have been better for my opponent just to have stayed in with Charizard and protected the turn I Thunderbolted. Although I guess that ends up not really mattering much, given that Duraludon came in. Well, I'm not sure. Either way, that was a really, really fun one. Uh, we'll play a third game today, and okay. I think this is the Team Wolf designed. I know he designed some Colossal team, but I don't know if these are all the Pokemon on it. Um, I haven't seen it, but... This means that we probably bring Weezing because we don't want to get surfed by the Weavile. We do have to worry about Excadrill. Like, if it's Moldbreaker, Excadrill, and Togekiss, uh, which it probably is, we have a really bad matchup against that. So that's not good. Like, I don't like our matchup against this team, mainly because of Excadrill. Or, yes, Togekiss. If you remove Togekiss from the equation, this is fine. But unfortunately for us, it is an integral part of the equation. <laughs> Uh, so I think my opponent leads Togekiss Excadrill, and we need to find something that has a good lead against that, but also gives us outs against everything else. Hmm, you know what I'm actually thinking? Weezing Arcanine? We get the Intimidate off, protect Weezing turn 1, and then switch out into Rotom. Right, that seems a little ambitious. <laughs> huh. Um, this is not great because our matchup against Togekiss sucks, so I want to bring in the Duraludon. Maybe I have to, but there's a Gastrodon in my opponent's team. And my Gastrodon's really good here. It's so good. Ugh. Maybe I bring Duraludon instead of Rotom instead. I don't know how I feel about that, though. Actually, Rotom's probably better. It's just... Yeah, it probably is, actually. Uh, it's just uh, Mold Breaker Excadrill plus... Togekiss. I've like run into that a bunch recently and I feel like that this team does not have a great matchup against that so I need to edit it accordingly. 
Not sure what the best answer against that would be. Scarf like Heat Wave would be ideal. But it's X Control Gastrodon, which I guess is not as bad. Yeah. Um. Hmm. The thing is, Gastro here can just Dynamax, right? And go for Max Quake. Yeah, which isn't good. Who would it who would it Max Quake here? I would think Weezing. So maybe I switch out. Yeah, this is a problem by not bringing in Rotom. I don't have any great switch ins into ground type attacks. Um, unless it doesn't Dynamax and doesn't Max Quake for some reason, but that would be very odd in my opinion. This is such an awkward spot, because I'm just so weak to ground right now. I really thought Togekiss was coming out. Actually, I totally messed up anyway, because I can't get the Intimidate off Arcanine with my Weezing anyway. So, that wasn't a smart play. I'm actually just gonna double protect her and want to scout for if there's a Dynamax. Okay, Excadrill switches out, yeah. <laughs> Into Weezing. <laughs> yeah. So now I can bring out my Gastron, but surely my opponent's Gastron Dynamaxes. Yep. So it's gonna get early special defense increases, which is not good. <sighs> Maybe we should have led with Gastro, but the thing is, leading Gastro to Tyranitar Excadrill is really bad. You just don't do anything. I guess it's not terrible, actually, if we lead Arcanine Gastro. It's still not ideal, though. Yeah. We have the same Pokemon, but I think my opponent has a major advantage right now, so it's kind of unfortunate. Double Protect. And, yep, there's Max Quick. Yeah, we don't have Switch into Max Quick, that's a problem right now. It's hard to manage, okay. Uh, I think we have to sack something, unfortunately, but... Do we really sack Arcanine? That doesn't seem awesome. Hmm. I need to get in my Gastrodon, basically. I don't think I can switch in here, unfortunately. I think I just have to sack Arcanine, which really sucks. Maybe you can go for a Strange Theme Confused on Gastrodon. And we'll Will Wisp it too, for residual damage. Because right now, my Gastron still has a pretty good matchup against my opponents. Once again, the question is, does it have recovery? Because if not, I'll win the Gastrodon Mirror. If it does, then I think we'll probably lose at this point, because my opponent already committed to Dynamax and has gotten the special defense increases. But you should never give up this early on, obviously. It's just not looking great. Um, yeah, but the thing is, I have to lead something... My lead wasn't even good against uh, Togekiss and Excadrill, though, which is the funny part, because I forgot about uh, canceling my own Intimidate. Okay. Can we get a confusion here? That'd actually be super clutch. No. That's fine. That is a lot of damage. Sheesh. And there's Max Quake. Yeah, no recommend. So, I mean, now we'll be able to bring in my Gastrodon, and my opponent's Dynamax is gonna be over with soon. But at what cost, right? Things might be already be too late. Unfortunately. So we'll bring on Gastrodon. I'm gonna Dynamax, Max Quake. I guess I don't really need a Max Quake Weezing here, do I? Uh, I guess I'll just protect here with my Weezing. And go for Max Quake on to. I guess Gastrodon? Like, Weezing doesn't pose an offensive threat to me whatsoever, nor do I care about it canceling abilities at this point. And I actually don't want to give my opponent a free switch in into something more offensive. So, to win this right now, we have to hope Gastron doesn't have recover, I think. I wanted to switch Weezing out into Dura Ludon, but if that just switches into a Max Quake, we're doomed. So, we don't think I can afford to do that. Yeah. Uh, but in this position... It also comes down to what the last one is on my opponent's team. Because right now, Gastrodon has a good matchup against Weezing, Excadrill for sure, and against my opponent's Gastrodon, there's no way to heal up. So, it really does come down to what the last Pokemon is. So, let's see. Alright, Weezing switches out. And, uh, so Togekiss was part of this game. Okay, my opponent just didn't lead with it. Yeah, okay, then that's really bad for us, I think. 
<laughs> it's actually really well done too because now with Togekiss out, you can redirect Earth Power. I can't max quick the next two turns basically. Um, because you can follow me. So I need to knock out Togekiss. But with Togekiss being out, it does mean that if my opponent doesn't ever cover, I think Gastron 3v1s this game, quite frankly. So it's still possible to win. Just might take a while. Okay, we get the max quake off first. So I don't know if we speed high here. I'm I don't have any speed investment. That doesn't nothing, yeah. But we get a special defense increase, which is still important. And yep, max quake into my wheezing, I'm sure. Yep. Okay. So that'll proc citrus. Question is, does Togekiss follow me next turn? Probably does, right? I want to just Sludge Bomb and uh, go for Water Dynamax attack into Togekiss. Do you even follow me? It, it would be so risky here to just go for Max Quake that I feel like... Uh, it's probably still better to just try to prioritize knocking out Tobacus because our win con right now is hoping Gastron doesn't have recover. So we'll double up into Tobacus here. My opponent could just be smart in Air Slash and Earth Power the Weezing here. Or go for that, that was a really good play. Man. Well done, well done. Okay. So we'll set up Brain. Uh, looks like we do Speed Tie, okay. Yep. Uh, and wow, we don't even survive that earth power. Yeah, so that was as good of a protect as my opponent could have gotten off. Uh, this does give us a free switch in into Duraludon, though. Although now, awkwardly, we don't set up the rain and Storm Drain activates. Yeah, that was actually really well done. That was a simple play to make, but a good one at that. Togekiss is not a fun Pokemon to deal with with this team, especially when you have multiple ground type Pokemon, but... I think the way we win this is we need... Does Flash Cannon knock out Togekiss? That's the first question I have. Duraludon. Against Togekiss. Flash Cannon with choice specs. 87.5% if it's like max HP, 12 special defense. I don't want to steal beam. I think I have to Flash Cannon. Yeah, I'm going to Flash Cannon and just max quick. If, if Gashon just shows me recover here, though, I'll just forfeit. <laughs> like, uh, there's no point playing against it if it does have recover, because it's already boosted up. But if it doesn't have recover, then we could potentially still win. Um, yeah, I think I have to fly. I mean, if I steal beam there... And Togi has followed me, okay. So we need the Flash Cannon to KO here. If we do, then maybe we're still in it. Uh, no Babiri Berry. And let's knock out. Oh, that's so bulky. That's like max HP stuff, special defense. Alright, that's probably game then. Yeah, that's gotta be max HP special defense. Uh, Choice Specs or Ludon against max HP special defense. Togekiss does 73 to 87%. So not only is it max max, but we got basically the min roll. Not that the roll mattered. My opponent just definitely outplayed me this game. Uh, completely. Really nice lead. And part of the problem with this matchup, or, or the dynamics of this game... Wait, how did that do so little? Oh, Togekiss had the special defense increase, didn't it? I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so I'm not even sure Steel Beam would have KO'd. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would have. Yeah, that was an excellent switch. Oh, no, Steel Beam probably would have. Uh, it would have been a long, drawn-out game. We would have needed... Yeah, I don't think we'd probably end up winning there anyway. I don't even think we have enough PP to win at that point, because... We don't have enough Earth Powers, basically. So, really well played on my opponent's end. Like, you can see how uh, opposing Gastrodons can be kind of annoying to go up against. Especially if they lead first. And part of the problem was that, like, Gastrodon itself is okay. But the thing is, because my opponent has Excadrill on that team, especially because Moldbreaker Excadrill is really common with Togekiss, I'm a lot less inclined to lead Mimikyu. Because if it is, like, Scarf Moldbreaker, you can just Iron Head to KO me. Uh, whereas, like, some of, one of the ways of dealing with Gastron is, like, Dynamaxing and then going for Max Ghost to lower your defenses. But in that case, my opponent just had a really good lead um, and just played really well, honestly. Yeah, really good Max Quakes. I ended up bringing a team level super weak to it. Plus, even if I brought in Rotom, my opponent could have just switched in Weezing to cancel out my Levitate. So, 
Uh, it's funny that we both had Gastron Weezing, but I think my opponent just made better use of it because the supporting members were better on that side, and my opponent just played a lot better there. So, uh, cool to go up against, though, honestly. Really, really well played, and a bunch of Gastrons today. As we see Gastron slowly becoming a little bit more standard in the meta, but I'm all for that. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you, as always, for watching. Go check out the team building guide if you have not already, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, peace.